Hello, this is Katie. Welcome to another one of my jewellery making tutorial videos. So today we're going to be making um, an example of this crochet necklace. Now I have a video on making how to make a bracelet and I did give kind of brief instructions in the description of that on how to make the necklace but this is the big one this is how to make the necklace and i'm going to try and cover it as much as possible in this one video although i have done a separate video for the clasp and how to make the combs just to make this one a little bit shorter for you and you can watch that if you don't know how to make those things yourself already okay so let's just quickly go through what we're going to need there is quite a lot that we need but most things are basic things that you'll have yourself in any case so firstly we're going to need some gemstones so i use chips and nuggets for these so usually you get a chip and nugget strand and they tend to be stranded up like this on a temporary strand and they are about this one is 84 centimeters and it's in a loop you need two of these so this twice so this and this so two of those to make one necklace so it does take quite a lot of gemstones and it does take quite a lot of threading the threading and the crochet are actually done sort of maybe over a day and then making the necklace is actually quite simple it's actually constructing it so you need your gemstones and you need those threaded onto a monofilament so this is a fine um, almost like a fishing line jewellery thread. It's quite readily available. It's it's usually called monofilament and you need a, a full reel. So I'm not exactly sure on how much is in this reel, but it's a brand new reel just because you will be using quite a lot of it. Okay, so there you, you kind of two main ingredients. You are also going to need a crochet hook. So you could use a crochet hook that's between three and four millimeters. This is a 3.5, so bang in the middle. So, and any sort of crochet, it doesn't have to be of, of a fancy handle like this one has. It can just be a really basic crochet hook, but a three, three and a half or a four will do absolutely perfectly. You need some scissors. You need some jewelry making glue. So something that's actually doesn't set hard. This is, sets, and it's still got some malleability to it. That's an E6000. Uh, for your combs, which is in the other video, you need a wax wire cone or something similar to make your little cone ends, but you can pre-buy them as well. Uh, your tools, you are going to need flush cutters, um, your chain nose pliers and some uh, six step bailing pliers. And then we've got some wire, which is 0.9 millimetre. I will probably keep saying 0.9 millimetre because I work in UK terms, but the American term is 19, um, 19 gauge. And also, if you haven't got that, you can use for the sections that we're going to do in here, sort of these little sections and how to connect, you can use a 0.8 millimetre, which is a 20 gauge as well, if you don't have the 0.9. So the only thing I haven't told you about is these little bits here. So these are little pegs and a little clamp. So you can use um, sort of pins into your macrame board or a peg for this so and you need sort of between 15 and 16 inches width which a macrame board is perfect for or the piece of tool the toolkit that I'm going to be using just because it makes it nice and easy is a knotty do it all so one of these let's pop it the right way around so one of these this is not essential this is quite an expensive bit of kit but you can just use your pegs into the edge of a macrame board fine and it'll work just perfectly so i think i've covered everything there i'm going to very quickly show you how to do the basic crochet i'm going to show you that on some different thread because you won't be able to see it with on the mono, monofilament and then we'll get on with making our crochet necklace so you are going to pre-thread your beads your gemstones onto your monofilament like so but I'm just going to show you very quickly on how to do this on some cord and some seed beads, just because it visually you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So we need to start with a slip knot. All we're going to do is a ladder stitch. So if you've done any sort of crochet before, you've already got this. So we're just going to make a loop. So I'm just, I've got a few inches sort of in my hand. Um, I'm right handed. So the, the piece that's in my hand is in my right hand. 
and then I've got a couple of inches and I'll just turn that to make a loop and then I'm going to take the tail section make another little loop it's very curly as this thread because it's near the end pull that push that loop up through the loop I just made and bring that loop together and that will make you a little slip knot so there's lots of different ways to make slip knots that's just my little way there's you know you'll be able to find different different ways and I'm sure you'll be able to do something like that yourself then you're going to pop that loop onto your crochet hook and there we go we're ready we're ready to start so just to begin with we're not going to do any beads we're just going to do a little chain so I tend to hold it across my palm I'll hold with these two fingers here and then I'll just lift that up just to create a little bit of tension with my finger okay so my hook is in my right hand my beads and my thread are over here with um, on the left hand side and then all we're going to do is just to make a basic chain is we're going to pull over the thread so hook the thread and pull it through the loop that's on your crochet hook holding nice and close with your left hand hook the thread pull through hook and pull through hook and pull through and then we're going to start off you're obviously going to be working with your monofilament have a little practice with some other thread thread if you want to we're going to start off with five or six loops little chains with no gemstones at all so that is what you're wanting to create just a little starter now you've got something to hold it'll make life easier so let's just pull some more of this thread off you will have to keep kind of getting some thread bringing the gemstones down and it does take a lot of time it does get a bit tangly but once you get into a rhythm i promise you'll be fine so i tend to pull sort of a few gemstones down and hold them in my hand and then holding on just doing exactly what the same as i did i'll drop a gemstone down i'm still holding with this my finger and my thumb in the same place and i'm going to hook the thread and pull it through and i'm going to do one two three three or four between each one drop a gemstone down or in my case a seed bead and that kind of attaches it and then one two three drop it down one two three that's four because i didn't do the drop it down bit but you can see they're all kind of attaching really nicely so and don't worry if your loops are very slightly bigger than other loops it's fine it all kind of levels itself out and just keep dropping gemstones down this i will tell you is going to take a few hours but once you kind of get into a rhythm it will be fine just watch a bit of tv while you do it and just keep going so once you get to the other end and you've got lots and lots and lots of gemstones on there obviously this is cord and seed beads but you will have the gemstones and the monofilament you're going to finish off just like you started with sort of five or six loops so a little bit longer section and then all you're going to do is just pull that loop just so it's a little bit bigger just while you oops snip that off so snip off the tail and then all you need to do is pull that loop and it will create a little knot at the end and that will be yours finished so this is just a little mini section and what you will end up with is lots like this so this is a malachite gemstone and you can see there where i've just finished off with more loops and then i've just pulled that loop through and pulled it tight now as i go what i tend to do i just use a little bit of plastic bag or just anything that you can wrap around because you'll have a lot of crochet and you don't want it to get all tangled so just once you've got a long section start wrapping it round, and then you'll have your section wrapped here and then you'll be crocheting along and you can just kind of keep everything organized and everything nice and tidy so i'm just going to move things out of the way set up my knotty do it all or you could be using your macrame board and we'll work out um i'll work out exactly what you need to do to actually complete the necklace design so i'll see you in a few seconds okay 
Okay, so I've got myself prepared. I've got my naughty do it all. Like I say, you can use the edges of a macrame board, just pop some, some sort of peg in, something that you know the little loops that you've just created will go over. So this one is a malachite one that we're going to be making. I've got my little cones and my clasp. So those are the tutorial to make those are available in a different um, tutorial. I will pop the link on this one, on this tutorial and also in the description below. And I've got four beads, so it doesn't really matter. You can use whatever size you want. I've got four eight millimeter size uh, clear quartz here. I've also got a little clamp, so that's it, but you could just use your basic sort of clothes peg. That's absolutely fine. I've got my glue and I've got my wire work tools just set to one side. So that's my flush cutters, my round nose or six step baling pliers and my chain nose. And I've also got some scissors, which I'll need briefly as well. So we're just going to start making up the actual um, necklace. So we're just going to go for that second loop. So not the first one, the second one. And we're going to pop that over the first peg. And what we want to do is just lay, lay it. So we don't want to stretch it because it will be quite stretchy. So we don't want to stretch it out. We just want to lay it in between. So I've got my measurements at 16 inches. You can go with whatever you feel happy with and you can shorten it, add more links, lengthen it. Don't have any links, it's up to you. So, and then I'm going to lay it across this way and pop one of my links through. And you're just going to work until you get right to the end, just backwards and forwards. So we'll just do that really quickly. Just remember, don't stretch it. Right, so this one's actually worked out quite well, but if you end up with it stopping in the middle there, just leave that end at one side, we'll sort that out a little bit, little bit. So this has ended up well. I'm just gonna be wasting a little, like a few gemstones. I'm just gonna lay that along and pop that in there. Don't worry about them extra gemstones at all. They will be fine. So now what we need to do is we need to grab our wire. Sorry, I forgot to mention that at the beginning of this section, but you should have it to hand because we talked about it at the beginning. Now you can take quite a longish piece because you're going to be using it for both ends anyway. So I'm going to take about 20 centimetres of my 0.9 millimetre wire, which is 19 gauge. And I'm going to make a little eye loop. So a little, kind of like an eye pin. So taking my round nose pliers. I'm going to use the second one just because I want a little bit more room in this. So I'm going to use the second size, which is size, which is about three millimeters. Or you can use your round nose pliers or to whichever size you want. But you want it small. This is going to go inside your comb right at the very tip and just form a loop. So it will form that kind of P or nine shape and then just pop your pliers inside the loop on the length side and straighten that out. So you actually create an eye pin and then just give that a wiggle so you know it's going to come together. Once you've wiggled it and brought it together, actually open it. So open it like you would do a jump ring. So we've got a way of getting inside there. So let me just move a few things out of the way. And with your little peg or your little clamp, just pop it on the opposite side, the side that you're not going to be working with because you don't want these to pop off. So let me just move this along a little bit and I will zoom in a little bit for you so we can see what we're doing. So let's have a look. So remember, we're looking at, just lift it up so you can see that last one you popped on, look at the loop that it's on and then add that to your open loop of your eye pin. Again, looking at the loop. So what we want to do is make sure we get 
the loop. If you drop it, you're better off kind of doing all the kind of measuring it all out again from end to end. And then, you know, you're not going to kind of get a really baggy bit in the middle. So just lifting each loop off at a time and popping that on there. There we go. Until all of these are on that pin. You'll have an open pin with all of those loops on there. So we need to close this loop. So we want it closed so that none of those threads can get out. And then this little dab of glue is just kind of like an extra security. So the little bit of glue is just going over the actual kind of eye of the pin. I'll bring that up to the camera so you can see that a little bit better. So I've just kind of popped a blob of glue in the middle of the eye and that will keep everything together. So we're going to pop the cone on the end there. Then we're going to pop one of our beads on. So this is an eight millimeter bead of your choice like so and then we're going to push that and pull that really really nice and tight together popping our pliers in so that we're nice and tight i'm going to make that angle so i've just got a few millimeters of um, length there where our wraps are going to go and then we're going to make a little rat loop we've got that angle coming away i can pop my pliers in the size that i want on the outside and then i can wrap around reposition and wrap all the way to make a loop and then I can grab that loop nice and firmly with my pliers and I'm kind of trying to support the necklace a little bit as well just because there's some weight to it now pulling it down and I'm just going to wrap it around towards my bead and what you're looking for is kind of three good neat wraps together nice and neat nice and tightly fitted together and then we can snip away the excess like so now and then you just need to find that little tail end of the bottom of the comb and turn that in towards, so you can see it's just coming towards the inside there and that will add a little bit of extra security too. So then you can go on and finish the opposite end. So that was the opposite end on this because I missed a little bit, just went off camera a little bit. So now I've got all this together. What I would do now is actually wait until it's dry. So I'm just gonna move everything out of the way i'm just going to let you see that at the moment so you can see i've still got my ends attached and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to wait until that is all dry inside so i mean 24 hours is is proper drying time but you can kind of give it 20 minutes and you'll be okay to work with it because it will stop that being very wet kind of look to it and i will show you how to make the rosary links that attach onto the clasp So all we need to do to finish off is make her a rosary link with one of our beads matching our clear quartz to link our actual necklace to our clasp. So those are pre-made. There is an extra video for those. And we're just going to go ahead and attach these. So we're going to need our wire work tools, which is round nose or six step bailing pliers, your chain nose and your flush cutters. So. I'm going to take a piece of wire so again this is the 0.9 millimeter 19 gauge wire and we can create an angle think about it. our beads going to be in the middle so we've got plenty of wire each of these are about 15 centimeters long and i'm going to start making that rosary link so it's just a really basic wrap loop pushing this all the way around reposition my pliers and then make that loop and pass through. Now, before you actually create the rest of the wrap, you've got the loop part, you're gonna attach it onto your necklace. So just give it a wiggle. And then 
we're going to hold on to this little section here. So hold on to the loop and then you can use the tail to wrap around uh, just as before. Usually wrap around three times. That's two. And all the way around for a third. Give that a little squish. Snip flush side on. Give that a little squish as well. And then you can add your bead, like so. And this time we're going to attach one part of our clasp. So choose whichever part you'd like. Make sure your loops are going the same way. So I'm going to hold this this way around and push away. So my loops are going to be facing in the same direction. So I just went a couple of millimetres down my pliers. And again, the size that I want is the smallest size. So that's on the outside. Pliers as close to that um, angle that I just made as is possible. And push all the way around. Reposition my pliers until I can bring it all the way around. Like so. Don't forget to take that out once you've got the loop. And add your clasp section. Give that a wiggle so it comes on. Hold that loop to retain that shape. By holding the loop, you're retaining the shape and creating a little bit of strength while you do this last bit of wrapping. And then nice and gently, you should find that three wraps fills that space really nicely, like so, like a little sweetie. Don't eat them. And snip that off. Give that a nice squish and that's one half. And then you're going to do the exact same on the other side, which I will do in a second. And then the last thing you're going to do is any of these threads, because your glue will be dry. Don't cut the knot. Can you see there's the knot that we finished on there? Don't cut the knot. Give it a nice pull. Make sure that knot's tight and just cut a little bit away from that knot. And then on one of the sides, yep, yeah, there. We've got that little bit where we've got some extra um, beads on there. We can just snip that off right there. Don't worry about any little pieces that come off. And then we're we'll ready to finish it. So I'm just going to finish that other side and then I'll show you the complete finished design. So there you are. That is the completed necklace design. It looks beautiful on. They just hook together. Also, one thing you can do is you can twist it. Whoops. So if you twist it, it kind of creates a rope, as you can see. And then you can wear it kind of a little bit more kind of uh, dense. So it all kind of twists together. That is really pretty. It looks really pretty on. I'll just say, show you some of the other colours that I've made in this as well. All the other gemstones. This is my absolute favourite and this is what inspired this design in the first place. Um, this is a brand new one with the new design of, of the back. So this is um, some appetite, some beautiful, beautiful appetite. And I've also done one to show you in a slightly chunkier nugget so you can see what that looks like as well. So that's this is an amethyst and it's slightly chunkier so you can see it creates more of a, a striking look. So thank you very, very much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell below to select all and you won't miss any of my videos. Take care.